So I came across an interesting question this week. And the question was, how can I use average if across multiple columns? And I gave some thought to this and I actually ran it by a couple of my mates. And I believe that I found three possible solutions to this. And in the end, I'm going to show you all three ways of doing this. So just the example um, is essentially I've got I've got class A and I want to know what the average what the average is for all three months across class A. So if I use the average formula just as reference, I essentially want Excel to automatically go and determine the average. Uh, but I want to be able to change this to B and then get the average for B, right? So the reason why we can't use average if, if we use average if, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, this is my range. This is the range that I want to apply the criteria to. And that's my criteria. And I would want to basically lock down these cells, but because I'm not going to be moving the formula down or sideways, I don't have to lock these formulas, but I could. Uh, that's good practice to, to, to get used to locking your formulas down. And then I want to apply my average across all three columns. And if I close the bracket, you'll see it gives me the wrong answer because it actually just does the average of January. So it just returns the average of the first column. And that can be detrimental if you're building a model and you think that Excel is returning all three columns, but it's actually not. I also can't use average ifs and average ifs allows me multiple criteria. If I choose my average range and then my criteria range and then my criteria, then you'll see I get a value error because average is if average ifs does not allow multiple columns. So if I change this to column C, for instance, then it gives me the same answer as average if. What I can do is I can change my, my reference to, for instance, an average column, and that would give me the same answer as the average of A. But the problem is, as soon as I don't have the same number of values in the row, the, 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 the value returned is incorrect because this average is over, over two and these averages are over three items. Okay. So that also doesn't work. So average if and average ifs does not work. Um, I also don't want to necessarily use the, the average column in this case. Right. But, um, my first solution would be using some new functionality in Excel and, um, and, and just to show what it, just to unpack the solution, I'm going to use the filter, the filter uh, formula and the filter formula allows, allows me to basically filter an array and apply and include an include rule. And I'm going to say, filter filter for me the, the values and include where these values are equal to my parameter or my my input value and that will basically filter for me and return only class a's values and if i change this to b you'll see it dynamically updates to to spill for instance all the values for b uh, so that'll work perfectly if I wrap this in an average, right? So I can just go and say average filter my array and include where my class equals A. And that would give me the right answer. And that is dynamic as well and allows me to change my, my values or to change my, my input values. All right. So, um, finally, the person who asked the question, I actually got back to that person and I said, I've got your answer. And I told him about the filter and he said, yes, he loves the filter idea. But the problem is that he wants, he wants this to be backwards compatible. And the filter functionality only applies to Excel 2019 and Office 365. 
So then I ran it by some of my my mates, and one of my mates came up with with this solution, where you basically say, well, use the average, and then let's build a an actual um, backwards compatible Excel array function. So what what we can do is we can say average if, so rebuild if, and say if these values are equal to well i'm just going to put locks in because we um because we're using the array function if those values are equal to a then return these values and that will actually bring back row references to actually well, it'll bring back trues trues for the first three columns or everywhere where it's a and we'll actually know to return just this per just this piece and that's the that's the purpose of a of an array formula and once i'm done i go control shift enter and that will wrap my formula in these curly braces so you can't wrap the you can't wrap it in these curly braces yourself you have to upon editing this formula you'll see the curly braces disappear you have to press control shift and enter and that is a backwards compatible formula then finally, the best solution, or not the best solution, but the preferred solution for me is to fix the data, right? Because the problem is that data with homogeneous values should not necessarily span across columns. You would actually prefer, or most people in data would prefer that these numbers are just under, are just contained within one column. And that makes the data more versatile and makes the data more applicable to different scenarios. So how do I do that? I can use Power Query to do that for me in a couple of seconds. I go and select the table or select the range and I would go to data from table or range and then what this would do is it would actually create a table for me and ask me where is my data for my table and I, and I tell it that my table has headers. Once I do that it opens up the Power Query window and when I'm in Power Query, all I need to do is either select the column that I don't want to unpivot or go and select these columns and say transform unpivot columns. If I had selected the other column, I would have said unpivot other columns. I can even right click and, and choose the, the unpivot columns option. And that would immediately bring my attribute across and I can call my attribute month. And I'm basically done. Um, Power Query has automatically picked up that these are numbers and would treat them as such. And my class is then repeated across months. And this gives me the ability to do much more with the data. So if I go close and load, I can now take this and just use a normal average if formula, apply that to my range. And the nice thing about the fact that this is now an Excel table is this is no longer just a cell reference, but an actual proper named reference reference. And I would say apply criteria A, my average range is my value. And that would bring back table three, two value and enter. And that gives me my answer. This now also gives me the ability to say use average ifs and I can now tell Excel that this is my average range. I don't have to use um, lock, locking formulas because this is now an absolute reference, uh, a named reference, and would automatically expand with the table. And I could now apply multiple criteria. So I could say bring back where, where criteria is A and where my second criteria is Jan, for instance. And th that just gives me way more uh, versatility by just moving or just fixing my data and the structure of my data and that's it i hope you guys liked this i hope you hope you enjoyed the video if you did please comment please like please share with your friends and please subscribe thanks